Mikrofon check, jedan, dwa, koje to Skąd sem praczasz, faki, danie, leto Koje twoje język ljubavi Znam srpski, znam swahili Ide sli sa mnom, reci mi Sad ili nikad ne sledeći Gde si, brate, sto meseci Ili sto godina Mala greška, koga briga, jebi ga Napiši to u novinama Ja i doktor kao Pinky i Švaba Petar i Baca iz Južnog Petara Ali postoji razlika Mi bežimo od dama i ne od gangstera Ona je rekla da ne traži dečka Neće biti moja medicinska sestra Ona je igra tako grešna Najlepša balkanska žena Ciao, zdravo and walk one We're back again with another Another reaction Today Myself and Dr. Sconson, we've been sparring, we've been we've been doing a bit of fighting ourselves, so we thought why not react straight literally we just came from having a tear up, yeah? So so we thought why not react to some football factory, Danny Dyer, Balkan style. Yeah man, you know, let's let's delve into the history of, you know, the footballing culture over there Serbia and Croatia so yes I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to this one and obviously where we're from the UK you know like we're literally what 15 minutes away from Selhurst Park Millwall Millwall I didn't realise that they'd done a Serbia and Croatia version of uh, one of this so let's get into this one Idemo Idemo Ras Klar Idemo I'm Danny Dyer and this is the real football factories international Oh, let's get into it, bruv. Get it I'm on! Film, Come on, boys, I ain't there! Which was all about football violence. Fucking <laughs> Then I travelled the UK and met the real football firms. Now, I'm going international. Nine countries in two months. Around the hooligan world in 60 days. A whole new level of football violence. We'll be in riots, we'll get tear gas, chased, and even shot at. It's gonna be quite a trip. Oh, man. This week I'm in two countries that used to be part of one. Two countries with a proud football in history, whose clubs have some of the most fanatical followers in world football. Football hooligans who went from fighting each other on the terraces to fighting one another on the front line in a bloody civil war. George Orwell once said, football's like war minus the shooting. Well, this is the story of football with the shooting. This is the story of the football firms of Croatia and Serbia. I'm going to the former Yugoslavia to these two countries to meet some of the most notorious firms in world football. Four firms who only 15 years ago fought for their countries, Croatia and Serbia, in the civil war that broke up Yugoslavia. It was one of the bloodiest Europe had ever witnessed and the scars are still here to see. But what's happening with the firms today? I want to find out who they're fighting against now and what they're fighting for. I like when they beat each other, I like when they beat police. I think that's, that's life, that's football. It's the same feeling uh, like a sex. Excellent. With two girls. <laughs> in Serbia I'll be in Belgrade. The city shared by the heroes of Red Star and the grave diggers of Partizan. And in Croatia, I'm going to the capital city, Zagreb, to meet the bad blue boys of Dinamo Zagreb. All the room to fight for that club. I'll be at their stadium, the scene of a football riot that for many was the real start of the civil war in former Yugoslavia. All of you guys out there who, who are from Croatia, if you had to tell the scones and bracha, yeah. If you had to tell us, what's the number one city or place we need to go in Croatia first before any other one, what will it be? In the comments below.
I'm starting my journey in Croatia, in the city of Split, because this is home to the oldest organised firm in Europe. Split is Croatia's second largest city, hidden gem on the Adriatic coast. Hidden gem. Bro, I just want to jump in some water. <laughs> I swear you did that. Uh, they should be playing some Tram 11 in the bloody background right now. I am. It seemed like the last place to be looking for international football hooligans. Oh, you see him there? Cheeky boy. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused. I thought I'd walked into the wrong series. I felt like Judith Chalmers. It seems very calm, nice. Nice people, a lot of old people. A lot of ladies, a lot of young ladies. I can't, I'm not getting no element of violence. <laughs> I know it's here and I know it's right. You wouldn't think it to walk around the city. But don't be deceived by the picture postcard setting. I'm here to see the dark side. This is home to Hyduck Split and their infamous firm, the Tall Cedar. Almost every game there's a fighting. A lot of fans from other clubs don't have the courage to come to Split. When we go to other towns... YouTube. The Sconson brothers do not promote violence. Okay. There's almost always problems. Twenty-two-year-old Yera is the latest generation of the Torcida, and wherever they go, he's there. If something happens, I'll be there. I won't turn away. It's the same as. Going out on a Saturday night, you know, if someone attacks your mates, of course you're going to jump in. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're saying that, but the whole reason you're there in the first place is for some trouble. <laughs> Don't try and dress it up like you was just strolling around the neighborhood and someone provoked you. You're there in numbers for a reason. <laughs> you could have stayed at home, bro, and watched the game on the telly. <laughs> And it all kicked off over half a century ago. 1950. And that's a proper firm. Established 1950. The more I saw of the city, the more it became clear that Torcida is the heartbeat of Split. Graffiti like this is everywhere. I mean, it is just absolutely all over the gaff. All They've over the gaff. got name on the street lamps. Not a lot of people know this about me, but I'm fluent in Croatian. So this says, if I had two lives, I'd give them both to you. That says to me passion, you know what I mean? That's a proper little motto, that is. And that passion's going to be needed. If I had two Split lives, is gearing I'd up for the biggest game of the season. <laughs> <laughs> They're big rivals. That's Dinamo Zagreb are in town. Uh, bro, just beat you, that's man. For the derby of Croatia. We can make a some troubles in Split. A match where fireworks are guaranteed. And in part two, we'll be in the thick of it. I'm in Split in Croatia, home of the Tall Cedar, the firm of Hajduk Split. And I'm here for the big Croatian derby against their bitter rivals, Dinamo Zagreb. The Tall Cedar are a firm with a fair bit of previous. 1961, referee attacked after disallowing a high duck goal. Yeah, they love attacking the 1974, referee. 1974, fought the Yugoslav army. Army evacuated from the stadium. But you know most of them... Um, 1988. You know... Army oh, evacuated the stadium, that's mad. I'm telling you. You know most of them videos you see on, on Instagram where, where they're chasing the ref down? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've seen them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's mostly over there, <laughs> bro. Banned from European competition for three years after writing in Marseille. 1990, pitch invasion and attempt to attack partisan Belgrade's players. And then there's the noughties and the cup final riots of 2000 and 2001 against, guess who? Dinamo Zagreb. 
and the latest incident occurred just two days before I arrived. Torcida members were among the 183 arrested in Zagreb for causing trouble at Croatia versus England. But it wasn't the English they were fighting. Yet again, they were fighting Dinamo Zagreb. A lot of them have been nicked. A lot of them fresh out of the shovel this morning. So, I don't know what I'm walking into. Maybe a bit ratty. I'm chuffed they're still going to speak to me, you know what I mean? I know none of them have slept. I know that the police don't treat them well here. You know what I mean? It's not like they're in a five-star nick. Um, let's go and see what they've got to say. Just a few hours after he'd been released from the nick, Yera from the Torcida was going to give me the lowdown. How do the police treat you here? Uh, not very well. No? They treat us like second-grade citizens, and uh, with the new laws coming in, they have authorities to limit our freedom of movement. And yeah. they, they can nick us for almost anything. They beat the shit out if they catch you. One of the biggest battles between the Torcida and the police happened at the cup final in Split in 2001. The Torcida broke out of their north end and spilt onto the running track. They regard us as a bunch of hooligans. We behave as we were treated. Then they launched a massive attack on the old bill. That was the, probably the biggest battle that I've ever seen in my life. But the police regrouped and forced the Torcida back into their stand. They wheeled out the water cannons to try and cool the situation down. But once the end was cleared, the Torcida headed into the city centre to continue the battle. There was a mob of about 2,000 people fighting the police and it went on for the entire afternoon. The city and its police felt the force of the Torcida. And I thought the English firms didn't get on well with the old bill. What, what, what does this mean? Old cops are bastards. <laughs> old cops are bastards. Quite simple. Unlike firms in England, the Torcida don't have to keep their nuts down. Their headquarters is bang in the middle of the town. This is what I love, yeah? You want to find the Torcida. But you can't just walk in off the street. This is their inner sanctum, and I was lucky enough to have an invite. Why is he walking up the stairs like he needs a shit, bro? Because <laughs> he's a hard man, isn't it? Like? <laughs> I'm loving the bar. <laughs> cool as fuck. <laughs> On the wall are hundreds of pictures of what are known as choreographies. I know that there's some deep reasons behind why people did get involved in stuff like that or whatever. But how do you explain for someone to stop engaging in activities like this Yeah, yeah. to a people whose slogan is, if I had two lives, I would give them both to you? <laughs> You can't. <laughs> you just know, yeah, it's yeah, ingrained, bro. <laughs> yeah, there's no way. The displays man. they organise with flags and flares. And there's the holiday snaps from their greatest away days. This is probably the best away match that we ever had. It's us in Rome. There were 6,000 of us. So who's Torcida's rivals? Zagreb? Yeah. We completely just invaded the city. We took over all their squares. We completely out them in the stadium. Yeah, the best moment of my life. It makes my hair yeah. stand up. Yeah, I can imagine. So who can take the tall cedar on? Who are the rivals for the crown of Croatia's toughest and proudest firm? It's the boys from the capital the Bad Blue Boys, the firm of Dinamo Zagreb, and they're in town for the biggest game in the Croatian football calendar. Hajduk Split versus Dinamo Zagreb, one of the most explosive fixtures in the world. Biggest rivals. In this moment, Torcida Split, absolutely. An army of 2,000 Bad Blue Boys are heading to Split, and one of them is this man. Bogdan Yurukalo. We don't like them. We really don't like them. We can make uh, some trouble since, please. It's high noon in split on match day, and the police are preparing for trouble. It's their job to keep the tall cedar and the bad blue boys apart. But the two firms have other ideas. Oh, 
All my crew is now at the center preparing for the game, uh, waiting for uh, guests. We are also prepared uh, for any kind of troubles. The boys uh, uh, looking for the guys from Zagreb. We are not afraid of that kind of contact. Is it going to go off like it did at the cup final in 2000? One of the worst incidents in the history of European football. The bad blue boys provoked the Torcida by throwing flares at normal Hajduk fans. We burned 10, 15 flares. We threw it on the ordinary people because we cannot reach the flare till Torcida. It's impossible, 200 meters, 150 meters. <laughs> and then whole stadium became crazy, na na na. They, they, they were shouting and singing, we will kill you, we will kill you. Enraged, the Torcida went berserk and rushed round to the Dinamo end to try and break down the fence and get it. Well, the guy said we threw it on the ordinary people because we couldn't reach the Torcida. <laughs> Bro, he's, he's how he's just uh, so nonchalant about it as well. He's like, they can come, but we're ready for this type of trouble. Like, he's so calm, like, yeah, being there, done this, this is nothing. No, but imagine, like, booking tickets to that game, thinking you're, you're just a normal fan, you're not involved in the violence or anything, you're thinking, I'm going to book uh, my seat to be just, you know, in the, the non-violent section because I just want a peaceful game. I don't want to go over to where the... I don't. I don't want to be with the ultras. Mm. So I know, like me and my family, maybe we can have just like a nice game, and they they can get on with it. And then all of a sudden, Flesh it's raining well. flares on your head top, bro. <laughs> and the bad blue boys. Chaos ensued as the police fired tear gas at the attacking fans, and the showpiece game of the Croatian season was abandoned. It was shocking even by Croatian standards, as more than a hundred people were injured and 98 arrested. It was a good incident. I was satisfied. Back at the latest derby of Croatia, and there's still two hours till kickoff, and the tension's rising. Both firms are heading to the ground, and the police are out in force. As the bad blue boys arrive at their end, the police are wary of any last minute attempts at an ambush by the Torcida. It's Torcida, Danny. Yeah. Torcida. Get your tzers right, please. <laughs> <laughs> Inside the ground, the crowd were coming to the boil. I can't lie, that name Hajduk, yeah, mm -hmm. sounds frightening. It just sounds like the Hajduk are coming. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> bruv, I'll be shook. Sounds like some old Ottoman like, <laughs> impalers, bruv. There was a Killer Priest song uh, that had a similar sounding, uh, is it Gabriel's Palace? Oh no, it's the Dibuk. Yeah, it reminded me of that. Hajduk. Yo, shout out to www.killerpriest.com. You heard it here first. Now control, control to major, major town. town. Gabriel. Hajduk Split should make that their anthem and just call it, call it, um, Split's Palace at the Hajduk. The right police stand by as the two groups exchange pleasantries. Pleasant. Throughout the game, various missiles are thrown towards the pitch. Firemen struggle to cope with the constant barrage of flares. And when a fire is started in the Dinamo end, and the police intervene, the lads from Zagreb dedicate a song to the other boys in blue. It's a totally different world out here. You just can't imagine this being allowed to happen at a game in England. No. For this kind of no behaviour, they've all been pinched and banned. Let me tell you this. If this, anything, 
if one quarter of this happened at a game in England, yeah, it would be all over the news. That team would receive probably six. They'd probably get re- relegation as yeah. as as a <laughs> as a punishment or fines as well. Fines, points deductions, maybe title stripped if it would depend on how bad it was. <laughs> no fans allowed in the stadium for yeah. at least like half a year. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. Nah, England will put a stamp on this straight away. <laughs> 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 Margaret Thatcher already got these lot out of here in the 80s, bruv. Uh, oh, yeah, she did, did it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah nowadays, <laughs> you go to a football stadium, even the most, how could you say, the most cultured in the UK, you ain't really getting that no more. So, to the to the guys in Croatia... Is it still like this in 2023 or has it died down a lot? Because even the football, you know, nowadays is kind of different. And while all that was going on, a football match took place, which had three penalties, eight bookings, a sending off and ended 2 all. But by the usual standards of this match, it was a quiet one. Not much trouble. Just 30 tall cedar and nine bad blue boys arrested. Fucking hell, mate. Split was certainly an eye-opener. I couldn't believe that this peaceful place was home to such a violent firm. Yeah, I think when we go there, we'll just stay to the peaceful side, man. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, we'll just enjoy the the pleasantries of um, that Split has to offer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if they ask me who do I support, I say, brother, I support the human race, bro. Listen, if aliens want to challenge us, then I support the humans. Yeah. This is it. By now, the bad blue boys were back home in Zagreb. By a now. A couple of hundred miles north of Split. It's the capital of Croatia, and it was where I was off to next. <laughs> the difference between the night. Split and Zagreb is like two different countries, to be honest with you. I mean, very cosmopolitan, hustle bustle, you know, chaos. You know, splits like Marbella, it's chilled out, nice. You know, this is like what you'd expect from a capital, I suppose. It was another beautiful city, but I wasn't here to see the sights. Every time he says that, it goes to some things. 20 years ago, in 1986. And since then, they've been causing quite a stir. Golden rule is to support team 90 minutes. And if it's necessary to to fight for that club. Here they are fighting in Milan in 2000, where they went on the rampage against the Italian police. But don't you always think, though, I get it, you're fighting for the club. Yeah. But the players are just, like, laying down, getting an after-game massage and with their bank account going cha-ching and then they're, like, sitting with their feet up and these lot are out getting their heads bashed in. <laughs> <laughs> Probably it's, it's true what you're saying. Mm. I think I think the the lure for why these guys are happy to get their heads caved in for their club is because there's like a tribalism that comes with supporting a club mm. that I think just appeals to a certain type of per like it's like okay we are both from the same club you know we both will die for this club duh, 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 duh. Mm. tribalism yeah but you're right though like the players brother the players be fighting now which is why I think nowadays this stuff must be near extinct. Unless there's like, obviously, I understand that there's some political ties, which is totally different. Yeah. But overall, like fighting another club for your club is just like, yeah. That is one thing, though. Support your club for ninety minutes. I definitely agree with that. Yeah, yeah. Support the club for ninety minutes. Like, you you rarely see that anymore in this country. I know we saw it when we went to Zvezda, mm, but mm. actually Newcastle did display that at Wembley against Man United. It was the dying minutes. They were 2-0 down and they were still up singing, waving their flags. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dinamo Zagreb is not a big European club. It's not a famous, like some English or German clubs, but uh, it's our glory. This incident resulted in over 50 arrests and more than 50 injuries on both sides. We are proud that we are uh, supporters of Dinamo Zagreb.
So when it comes to letting the players know they're not happy, they don't bother moaning on a football phoning. They believe actions speak louder than words. A few times we we smash their cars and uh, we we give them a few punches, you know, just for uh, like a yellow card, you know. So what happens when the players deserve a red card? We decided to go to the training, 50 of us, masked, and we took off uh, their uh, shirts, pants, everything, because they didn't deserve a shirt of Dinamo Zagreb. Oh, what the hell? No, 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 no. That, <laughs> that is some greasy shit. I support that. <laughs> I support that. If your players are not pulling the weight, don't let them sit back. No, but to be honest, I, I, it's a bit different when you, it's a smaller team like Zagreb. But you see like how these Rashfords and the place players like that, they're getting so much money. They If they have a bad few game or few games and they're not pulling their weight and they're not deserving that contract, they deserve some fans to come around and just slap them about a bit man, <laughs> and tell them, listen, if you don't buck up your ideas, you're gone. Because you know what? I was saying this about the Mason Greenwood thing as well, yeah? <laughs> in an ideal world, in an ideal world, if I was managing Man United and obviously all of these sponsorship deals and that, we didn't have to worry about it. My solution would be get the players together in a room, sit Marcus, sit Mason Greenwood in the middle, beat him up, give him a Give him a good kicking, a good hiding, whack him around the head, do all of that and say, listen, don't you ever mess up like that again. Now get back on the pitch and you better play well. That's it. That, that <laughs> would be my solution. <laughs> <laughs> Bruv, just knock, knock some, just scare him, really scare him into never doing something dumb like that again. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you in terms of players get protected too much. Yeah. Especially for the wages that they run is dumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think, yeah, sometimes a little, yeah. Yeah. yeah this yeah. is what we need. We need a bit of that. Bar Barman said that they take off the clothes. <laughs> but you know what, yeah? I see why. I can see why it would work. Mm. That will make, that, that will make, the player will remember that and be like, no. Nah. I don't want these men coming to the next training session and, and making me, like, walk home, start bullet naked. I need to put in a shit. But yeah, man, we, we, need, we, need, a, we need a bit... We need some Dinamo Zagreb ultras around uh, for this Mason Greenwood situation, man. Yeah, 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 guys. If you don't know, man, check out the Mason Greenwood situation. And when Croatian president, Franjo Tuzman, who was also the club president, made the mistake of changing the name from Dinamo to Croatia Zagreb. They set fire to his director's box. This has been burned in 1993, when some of our lads didn't know what to do because of the changing the name of the club. They burned all this. Ah, oh, it was... Uh... Dinamo, Dinamo. Eventually they got their way and the name was changed back to Dinamo. It was good. Effectively, they run the club. Effectively, they run the club. And when I went to see them play, I got an idea of where their power comes from. Bogdan and the Bad Blue Boys agreed to allow me into their stand, but it had been touch and go for a while. Cameras weren't allowed onto the stand, so we could only film from pitch side. It was first versus third in the league, but what shocked me was how few people were there. The bad blue boys had come out in force, but there was hardly anyone else in the stadium. And as for the Vartex fans, they might as well have come in a cab. I realised why the bad blue boys have so much power. Despite their antics, the club needs them, because if they weren't there supporting the team, nobody would be. I've never experienced nothing like it in the fact that constant singing. For 90 minutes, Bogdan made sure everyone on the stand was in full voice. Bruv, even, you see in England, yeah, even yeah. down to the fact that he's standing on that ledge with a drop behind him, 
you just would not be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Health and safety, bro. Stewards immediately are like <laughs> grabbing you down, either stand, go and sit down, or they'll escort you out. It's nuts. <laughs> Stands at the front with his back to the game, takes no notice, big old lumpy as an all. He's a naughty looking geezer. He starts the chant, I don't know what it is, his power though, his passion. And then he puts it down, pipes at everyone. Make sure everyone's singing. Right, takes everyone in. And if there ain't no one singing, he digs them out, he'll find them. Right, mad mince pies, do you know what I mean? Like that, bosh. And the singing paid off. As Dinamo ended up 4 1 winners. The following morning, I met up with Bogdan and we went back to the Maximir Stadium. For him, a big this long place is much more than just a football <laughs> ground. It's our second home, you know? Mm -hmm. Really, when I come to this stand, I forgot of on everything which is happening in my life. So how often would you say, Bogdan, that there's trouble in Croatia, trouble with the Bad Blue Boys, is it uh... In the 90s, it was a uh, oh, it, it was normal thing. Like you eat uh, every day uh, something. Mm -hmm. you know, every weekend we had problems. Every away match we had a fight with the police, with the... Uh, with the other supporters. Mostly uh, police though, yeah? Yes, mostly police because we had a war with the president of the Croatia and the whole government. We were enemy number one and the whole police were chasing us. So this was Croatia today. The bad blue boys and the tall cedar. Football firms fighting each other and the police vying to be the number one firm in the country. But the animosity here is nothing compared with the hatred that is felt for their neighbours in Serbia. Because that is about more than just football. They used to share a country, and then they went to war. Yes, okay, so yeah. We're gonna get into the second part. This is where he is, I'm guessing he's gonna travel to Serbia. So we've done the Croatian half. That's where we'll end it, part one. And we'll see you guys on the part two for some more ultra business. Sconson Productions. Ciao. Chickadee. Blexen.